Hello everybody, welcome to Build Fly Go. So more progress on the RV10 this week. We're uh, done with the, <laughs> the condition inspection on the 9, so we've been chugging along here. Um, as you can see, we're still working on that right tank, um, getting the remaining parts riveted and put in place. Um, just usual progress on these tanks, nothing special here. Uh, one of the big differences between this one and the 9 is that um, sort of bracket that you see me working on there um, is an integral part of the tank. On the 9, it's just an L, like a thick L bracket that gets riveted onto the, the rib. Um, you'll see me working on the lines that go inside the tank. There's a vent line um, that allows uh, air to you know enter the tank, and then there's also the return fuel line. Um, the vent line goes all the way across and gets attached to sort of the front side of the fuel cap flange, the red piece on the left. There's uh, little holes um, in the ribs uh, that get little uh, grommets that go all the way across. And the uh, fuel return line, which is for um, a possible fuel return system for a fuel injection system or an uh, engine management system, um, goes into the, I believe it's the third bay, uh, one, two, three, yeah, the third bay sounds right. And I may, might have mentioned it before, the idea is I'm moving it, uh, moving hot, possibly hot fuel further away from the pickup. So while that is setting, we're sort of short on Pro Seal. I just ordered some, I figured I'd get started on the spars. My guess is that at this point we're maybe four weeks away from receiving the fuse kit, so we need to get moving on some of these things. One of the first steps that you do with the spars is you clamp these uh, J channels on them. These are actually going to be the wing J channels, right? Like you do them now because the wing J channel holes actually match the spar holes. So this is a really easy way to do uh, the holes in those J channels um, while they're you know sort of solidly held in place instead of in a sort of a flappy wing assembly. Um, so you do these early and then you just put them aside uh, for you know three months and, <laughs> and then you get back to them and do when you're doing the wings. So basically a lot of drilling um, and putting things together. And uh, put those aside and now we're working on um, all of the holes, there's a lot of holes um, in those spars. Uh, they want us to um, deburr everything, of course, drill things to size, and they're uh, pretty much all of them. I think all of them at this point get um, countersunk, machine countersunk for the skins that fit on top of them. Um, there's also a lot of nut plates for either access panels or for the fuel tank attach. Uh, the fuel tanks are, you know, screwed into the spars so that they can be removable um, if you want to later. So lots and lots of nut plates, you see me installing them there, um, and then different depths of countersink. Um, you'll notice uh, because uh, there's a different countersink for if there's a skin that's going to have a screw through it mating into um, a nut plate, or if it's just a rivet that's holding a rib underneath the skin, or if it's a skin that gets riveted to the spar, uh, like the leading edge uh, skins and, of course, the regular wing skins. But yeah, good progress this past week. We continue to chug along. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends.